Hi friends, welcome back to Edupedia World. Today we are going to start a new chapter and uh, the first topic that we'll see is known as the electrical energy and uh, to begin with we'll see what electrical energy is, we'll revise the concept of conservation of energy and how that applies to electrical energy. We'll see some formulation and uh, calculations to find how much electrical energy is consumed by an element like a resistance then using that knowledge we will find out electrical power and we will also see the units for both electrical energy and electrical power so let's start with the introduction we have read that there exist many different forms of energy uh, like the kinetic energy potential energy mechanical energy which is the combination of kinetic and potential energy light energy, sound energy, electrical energy and uh, many more forms. So electrical energy is one of the many forms of energy. Right. And uh, we also know by the conservation of law of energy that uh, energy can neither be created nor destroyed but it can be transformed from one form to another form. That is to say electrical energy can be produced from other forms of energy as well as electrical, electrical energy can be transformed to other forms of energy. Uh, let's uh, take some day to day examples uh, like what is happening when you switch on the electric bulb. When you switch on the electric bulb, the electrical energy is getting converted mainly into light energy and heat energy. So that is a useful form into which electrical energy is uh, being converted the useful form, form being the light energy because we need to, to light our house right similarly electrical energy can be used to heat water by using electrical heaters there we are converting electrical energy into heat energy and uh, many more applications can be found in fact this ability of electricity to transform into different other forms of energy lies in the core of the concept of using electric power in our house. We use electricity for different purposes like cooking, heating, lighting and many more purposes. Therefore, with this background let us see how exactly electrical energy uh, how much is electrical energy, what is the power of electrical energy, those mathematical things uh, let us detail out. Now uh, let's go back to our circuit diagram which we have been considering till now. We have a source of power, a cell or a battery which might or might not have an internal resistance. So we will take the terminal voltage V and then what we do is we attach an element which can be any element. It can be a resistor as in a bulb or any other energy drawing element. Let us consider for the sake of argument that we have a resistor of resistance R and we have a battery of terminal voltage V. Instead of V, we could have expressed it in terms of EMF and internal internal resistance. But uh, to keep things simple, let's assume terminal voltage V. Now, if we calculate what is the work done to move a charge Q through the potential difference V, let's say a total charge Q charge Q moves through the potential difference of V then how much work is done? By definition of potential energy the work done will be equal to the potential energy multiplied by the charge which is moved across that potential energy. So the work done, complete work done will be equal to Q times V that is uh, from the definition of potential difference. Fine. Now given that we know what is the work done in terms of Q and V, let us try to write it in terms of uh, 
quantities that are measurable easily. What is the problem here? We can measure the potential difference, but the charge cannot be the charge consumed cannot be measured directly. Rather, what, how does the charge consumed measured? How is it measured? It is normally measured as a product of the current and the time. We know that uh, the charge is current multiplied by time. So how much current is flowing for how long gives us how much charge has flown. We will use this definition in the expression for work done. We will replace Q with this and that will give us an alternative form of work done. The alternative form will be current flowing through the circuit multiplied by the time for which the current has flown multiplied by the potential difference across which the current flows. So rearranging it, it can be written as V times I times T. So our work done in terms of the potential difference, the current flowing and for how long the current has been flowing is V I T. Now let us further manipulate this expression. We know that uh, V, the potential difference is I times R. That is the current flowing multiplied by the resistance across which the current is flowing. So if we replace V with I times R, what we will get is V is replaced by IR, I re remains I and time. Therefore, there are two i's. We can write it as i square r t. So this is another form in which work done can be written. In this form, we use the current flowing and the resistance through which the current is flowing and obviously the total time. The first form was the potential difference and the current flowing. Now, let's see the last form. We can replace I with V by R, isn't it? I can be written as V by R, so I will replace I with V by R. So that will give me V upon R and the whole square multiplied by R times T, which turns out to be V square by R square times R. So one R will get cancelled. We will get V square upon R multiplied by isn't it? So we can express the work done in terms of the voltage and the current, in terms of current and resistance or in terms of the voltage and the resistance. Depending on what parameters we know, we can use any of the three forms. So to sum up, the work done can be written as the first form is Q times V. This is the fundamental definition of uh, potential from which it comes. Second is it can be written as V times I multiplied by the total time. Third form is I square RT and the final form is V square by R into T. Okay, so now after this discussion, the, this is the work done. Here we have made use of the definition of potential difference and also brought into play Q is uh, the definition of the total charge that is I times T and also the Ohm's law. Second part, let us define what is electrical power. Okay, before I switch on to that, the total work done by the electrical energy or the total electrical energy spent, the unit will be obviously joule because it is energy. Unit is joule. Now let us talk about power. What is the definition of power? Power is work done per unit time. Isn't it? Work done per unit time. Therefore, using these definitions, these formulations which we already found, 
we can actually calculate what is the power right if we use this definition v i t then the power will be v i t upon t that is v times i or alternatively if i use i square r t i square r t upon t i will get i square times r so power consumed can be either, either uh, potential difference times the current flowing or current square times resistance or finally it can also be v square times t upon r and the whole divided by t that will give me v square upon r fine so the work done or rather the power consumed can be v i or it can be i square r or it can be v square r this is just by using the simple definition of power as work done upon time fine so the electrical power we know the electrical energy consumed we know we have also calculate uh, seen the unit of work done the electrical work done or the electrical energy spent let us see the unit of electrical power the unit of power we will see multiple units but the very fundamental unit of power as we have seen during our chapter of uh, work energy and power is watt what is watt watt is joules how much joule of energy is spent per second right so if one joule of energy is spent per second then we call it to be equal to one watt of power being spent or alternatively one watt can be said to be equal to the power consumed when a current of 1 ampere flows through a potential difference of 1 volt even then the amount of uh, power consumed is 1 watt that is a alternative definition higher powers can be expressed in form of kilowatt kilowatt is 10 to the power 3 watt or megawatt this is m sorry megawatt or 10 to the power 6 watt these are normally used uh, in electrical companies and stuff because uh, there the amount of power uh, produced is a large amount so it is it makes more sense to express it in higher units okay now we have seen the basic units of power that are more related with the si unit and uh, like to recap the whole concept uh, that if a potential difference of v is applied across the resistor r then we found out what is the work done three forms or rather four forms if we include this and using that we found out what is the power used by that element so these are the forms so depending on what are the information provided we will use the relevant form we will see this when we solve a few numericals uh, that will help you understand the uh, how to make the choices better next class we will continue from here and uh, we will begin by studying the commercial units of electrical energy we will see how the rating of some appliance electrical appliance is done and uh, finally we will touch upon what is known as the joules law of heating so hope uh, you are here to read about this new topics in the next class till then have a great day goodbye